As you started to look on uh, the different trends that were in there with um, temperature, with sea ice, uh, with many other um, effects in there, and then of course becoming much more aware of that keeling curve and looking at that keeling curve and just seeing that monotonous rise in the keeling curve, then it started to become undeniable. You just, you just could not have come up with any other explanations for it other than this was the tendency and the direction we were going in. Now, uh, before I reached um, that point though, it always seemed to me that uh, while I was in the doubting stage, if you want, it always seemed to me just good policy to hedge your bets in here. And that um, if we were heading in that direction, wouldn't we, uh, and, and we, we weren't quite certain about the data, but wouldn't, we wouldn't want to be driving that system to the point where it would be very difficult for us to actually uh, retrieve our position in here. So it always seemed to me just common sense to sort of have some way of uh, hedging the bet in some sort of way. And now, but now I think that we have gone from my own viewing of the, the, the da it's data in the end which, which, which drives the thoughts. And here I think we've sort of gone beyond that point where um, I, I would go back on any of the thoughts that I'd had earlier in there. So it has been an evolution of thought for me in the process, no doubt about it. Yeah. Go ahead. In the, uh, the, the wedge analysis that you had, yeah. it, uh, you pointed out energy efficiency and conservation as the one that we in Fargo can do, and, and I think we do some of that quite well, but that certainly needs to be a big part of our comprehensive plan. In addition to that, uh, what other types of, of uh, suggestions would you have for us, perhaps even in, in uh, I read the word adaptation, that when it needs to happen as well as the energy efficiency? Are there any other suggestions you may have along those lines for things that we could consider during our comprehensive plan development? I, I wouldn't, um, I don't think I would directly, I mean I think I mentioned the one earlier that, and in a way it's hedging bets, it's the same philosophy that I have with other parts of that, that as we look at um, the climate that we're likely to experience, the wet and dry cycles, the uncertainty of global warming on those cycles, that we really do need to be prepared for those extremes, and I see the city doing that, I think the city, this city has been actually excellent at um, taking steps to make sure that it is prepared. I think it had to do some fast learning on um, some of the flooding situation with the wet phase early on, but the city is a fast learner in here. Um, I, I am a bit concerned um, with the water supply, and uh, there are people in here who know much more about, and there are much more knowledgeable people who um, are consultants to the city on this, but um, it seems that I've seen numbers like the big problem in drought for the city would be the year 2050, and uh, maybe I'm wrong on that, but it, it looks from some of the data that we would look at, at least from the west, and if that transmits back to the east, it could be earlier than that, some of these problems with drought. And uh, we, but once again, we don't know any intensities or anything else. So I would always defer to the, climate, the real climatologist and to the hydrologist with respect to those types of plans as they're made into the future. It's just that the way I'm looking at them as a geologist in here and looking at that data, uh, we would see uh, perhaps um, moving that event, those events upwards. But I don't have any other particular ones. Maybe there are other people who um, would have some um, suggestions in here. I think um, you know that the, the ideas of conservation and um, the way in which we're using energy and public buildings at the university as well. Uh, hopefully, we can move to be a much greener um, place than we have been in the past. Good comments. I want to thank our speakers, Alan Ashworth and Dr. Kevin McCall, and our special guest that we had with John Wheeler. <laughs>
Um, I, I think an excellent presentation, and I uh, hope we get a lot of people that get a chance to check this out on, on the website. And I want to remind everybody, again, Go2030. If you haven't checked it out, uh, please take a, a moment to do that and, and post your comments. Again, let's give a nice uh, round of applause to both our speakers. Thank you.